Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? This is Prishpani. I wanted to introduce you to her because I think that she's a really, really cool human being. Hi, do you want to maybe introduce yourself? Basically, I started out doing computer science at school and then I ended up during COVID times um, dropping out of school and self-teaching and ended up landing up my first job this year as a developer. Mm -hmm. So prior to that, I was also still working. I was working in the tech industry, but I was doing more like systems administration and business analyst kind of things. What was your bachelor? What, what, yes, what? I was I was like partway through my bachelor's degree. I had kind of a bad experience with my school for my last semester and I got angry and I was just like, I basically threatened that I wouldn't come back to their school if they like didn't do something about it. Were you like missing some exams from the end of your bachelor and then you were like, you know what, I'm done. No, no, no. I, I still had like a, a few years or not a few years. If, it, if I was doing part time, it would have been like, yeah, like two or three years. Of, okay. Like and I was halfway through. Are you planning like to ever go back or like that's it? I'm not entirely sure. Honestly, I, I might reach out to like the head of the CS department and like mention my experience with like the other department and like see what they do about it. And like if they handle it properly, then maybe I'll go back. But I don't know. I, I also don't really feel like it's necessary. I've got a ton of coworkers that like don't have university degree. I know a lot of people that are like self-taught. If I am choosing to not go back, I need to make sure that I'm also being consistent with my studies that I'm doing myself. You yeah, know? like actually I keep like, we had a discussion, I think like a month ago or something that someone came in chat and they were like, no, don't tell people to get out of their school to for, for like to study like they have to stay in school you have to get a degree you have to work like that's first of all not everyone can uh not everyone can afford it yeah not everyone can afford that yeah i mean the education right now is like very like mono team like it's only for one kind of person that is like knowledge and they, they get the blah, blah, blah. like there's it's not yeah. that easy like university is not for everyone if you don't get a degree then you're not gonna be anyone you're not gonna find a job and then yeah. you get into the tech world and so many people don't have an actual degree. Like they don't have a degree, they don't have nothing, they just self-taught by themselves. They did a couple of projects, people liked it, that's it. How many of your like, co-workers actually have a degree? I think half. I have a, I'm in a small team though, but like yeah. half. A lot of the basis of like our technology, like a lot of that stuff kind of happened in like what, like the 90s when like the internet started happening and like whatever, right? A lot of people, it's not like people like took a computer science degree and then they're like, hey, let's build the internet. People are literally just like, hey, this is fun. Let's play around with it and break stuff and see what happens. That still continues to be like the best way to learn is just like be curious, break things, have fun with it. Like just because now it's a profession doesn't mean that we necessarily need to take like a super different approach to what they did in the past you know yeah 100%. and i think as well like if you can just show that you can do the work just prove your competency like be able to discuss like technical problems technical solutions mm -hmm. be able to show that you're like building stuff and that you're able to teach yourself like you're, you're able to learn that speaks volumes especially if you're looking for like your first role like they're not hiring you as a junior to be able to like redo their entire code base and like optimize it you know it's like they're they're hiring you for like the dev that you will be with some like conditioning some mentorship you know maybe in the tech world like in uh, developers world and everything it's more common to hire you considering that you're gonna grow they're gonna also teach you yeah. things they well, just want someone that has like the right mindset and then they're mm -hmm. gonna just shape you most of the times right? yeah the thing is with the tech industry and i think this is part of why like imposter syndrome is so like prevalent is that it's so vast like you can't know everything and basically your best skill as someone who wants to be in the tech industry in any capacity is to be adaptable because you're never going to see the same problem or like you might see the same problem twice. I guess that's why we have like patterns, design yeah. patterns and stuff. But generally, you're going to be dealing with a lot of different technologies. Like your solutions are going to have to be different. You're going to have to optimize for different things. So at the end of the day, like being adaptable ends up being like your biggest asset. And the best way to do that is to like know how you learn. I do think university was really helpful for me in that regard. Like in high school, I did try in high school, but when you're a teenager, sometimes there's a lot of things happening and you just don't like you just you just kind of got to like fly by the seam of your pants and that's fine, too. Um, but in university, I feel like it's like a really good time where you're at, where you're able to like really sit down and like learn how you, how to learn. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that from other people as well, where like that's been their experience with university and like their biggest takeaway. 
-hmm. is basically like the networking and figuring out how how to teach themselves. If if you can bring that with you, it's if you can teach like learn that stuff on your own. Even you just have to be like super consistent and like disciplined over motivation. That's what I always say. I always say like motivation is bullshit. How did you keep yourself motivated without having any exam? To be honest, my favorite way of like staying on track and like learning new things is to indulge my curiosities. By default, I'm just like a very curious person. I guess try and like motivate myself to like learn something. Like if you haven't learned it already, you obviously like don't know that much about it. But to just like keep asking questions and like try and um, try without like having studied or whatever, having looked into it, asking yourself as many questions about it as possible, like kind of like spiraling and kind of like piggybacking off the previous one. I get very, very curious about other people's experiences that is like always something that I find super interesting. Like I'm also very interested in like psychology and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I kind of like leverage that curiosity as well to kind of how can I make this interesting for myself? Uh, do you ever found yourself also like going through a rapid hole and at the end you're like, why did I end up here? Honestly, I, I feel like I'm pretty good at keeping myself like on point, I guess. Like if I know that there's something specific, not even necessarily something specific, because like sometimes it's not super obvious what the next step is. But I do find, yeah, just kind of make myself curious about it. Mm -hmm. And then I like to do as little like Okay, don't judge me for this, no, but I like to do as little like research as possible. And if there's like code to break, I want to just try and like break it and then try and fix it. Mm -hmm. And then I'll pull out all the resources to try and help me fix it. Okay. So it's kind of like a weird backwards way of like yeah. learning. Obviously I don't do this with like, like don't do that with prod. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know if I have ADHD or not, but like I definitely sometimes struggle with like staying focused mm -hmm. or like I get, yeah, I, I can get bored if I don't see yeah. like why you need to learn something. So like, mm -hmm. for example, in my CS degree, mm -hmm. when I was having to take like a million math classes, I was okay. like, why am I doing this much math? Like, yeah. how does this relate to coding in any capacity? Yeah. Why? It became very, very easy to like motivate myself to learn it. So then regarding yeah. your, your job, you were saying like the one that you got through, like you got after you self-taught yourself, like the, this job that you are at right now, how, how did you yeah. get it? Like, how did you find it? I would say because like I had two jobs that I got two um, offers for. So I have this one that I took and then I had another one as well. And both of them came from networking. So big part of it was like me putting myself out there with like the streaming, coding live on stream. Like a lot of people obviously see that some of them are hiring and some of them would like reach out, like reached out to me and said, hey, are you looking for a job? <laughs> so that obviously helps having some kind of way that you're showcasing your work is really mm -hmm. important. So like whether it be through like a blog or YouTube or whatever, both of those are like really, really good. If you're if a company is looking at you as like a perspective or a potential candidate, I basically just leveraged networking as much as possible. So if there are groups that are like active online that you you like resonate with the people that are in there, like with the culture of whatever it is. So like I recently actually just found one of my favorite like themes I actually has like a really, really cool discord community that I wasn't really expecting to exist, right? Like it's mm -hmm. a theme, mm -hmm. but like the whole team, they like on a daily basis, they like hang out in like voice chat, if there's like any open source projects and stuff like that, being active and helping people in their community as well is like a good way to stand out. Working with other, collaborating with other programmers is always going to be a bonus for you because like we're going to want to help each other get jobs. Right? That, that's, really, that's really, really interesting. That's a really good way of thinking. Like I think that we miss mm -hmm. out so many opportunities that we have uh, on, the, on the internet for sure. You were on Twitch, you were studying, you were also trying to find a job. How did you manage your time there? There are certain times of the day where I have like more energy than others. I basically would prioritize. So school always came first. So I would find the times during the day where I have the most energy. For me, yeah, I'd wake up at six. I would study until eight and then take the dogs out, go for a walk and then come back and start work at nine. If I can negotiate 10, I would always negotiate 10 because then it means like, like I could study from 6 a.m. until 9 a.m. and then go for the walk and then I could just work an hour later. When did you have like free time? Um, I honestly, it, I didn't have that much free time, but okay. there are certain times of the day where I'm less productive. I will typically like try and take that time off. For example, in the afternoon, if there's time where um, 
I was like less productive. So usually okay. what I would do is take that block off. And that's when I would like, I would go work out or like go for a walk or like do something else and just like completely chill because I'm already in such a state where I'm just like, I can't doing anything right now would be like, I would really have to force myself to. So I'd take like two hours off in the middle of the day. And then I would like make up for that usually like after dinner. And then I would maybe do some more studying before bed, but some, like it would be like a less intense. Girl, you're like, actually a cyborg. I try to like listen to my energy levels. If I have the energy to like do more, like try and contribute to more open source projects and stuff like that. And I have the mental energy to do it. I will still block out like the morning or evening. And it just kind of depends. Um, I just kind of like go with, with what works. But usually after dinner, I, I get like the burst of energy and I, Pretty much always work on something after dinner. How do you do that? Like, do I sleep well. I don't stay up late. Have you ever had a period in your life where you were like, I'm bad, shit, I'm bad, uh, me, literally like right now. And it makes me really sad because I know that I'm not operating at like 100%. I think it might have actually been like related to like health things. Like I think, mm -hmm. I think I was like, I got a multivitamin yesterday and I took my multivitamin. I took some iron. Like I literally just like stocked up on like, a bunch of supplements because my energy levels have been like so bad lately and it's not like it's not depression like i've i know i know that it's not for me because i've, I've been through mm -hmm. that and i know what that looks yeah. like i see a therapist once in a while anytime i'm feeling a little bit like anxious or whatever i buy like a pack of sessions or have you ever felt like burnout no i've honestly i feel like i've been pretty chill this year it's actually been bugging me that i haven't been like studying as much as i want to and stuff i've been really gentle with myself if i'm not like working mm -hmm. i'm like chilling knitting i haven't been putting a lot of like pressure on myself because i wanted to rule out i was like am i just doing too much like am i burnt out you were asking what how i deal with that what? yeah how did you deal also with the burnout in the past just rest so like i i went through really really bad burnout I'm so and, like, stressed. what should going. i do just relax. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's just relaxing. So honestly, if when it comes to burnout, because the thing is, is like, I feel like you don't know how to prevent burnout until you've experienced burnout. The next time that it happens, then you can start to like see the signs. Like for me, I start to try, I start to try and like, it's also like, I always have to have like some audio going. Like I have to be listening to a podcast or like watching a show in the background or like mm -hmm. uh, just to like do things. I actually, yeah. I try and do more like introspection when I'm starting to feel that way. I'm like, okay, you need to actually, because you're avoiding it, like mm -hmm. sit down and like meditate, do like a guided meditation or something like that. And just like see what happens. How do you deal with the imposter syndrome? Honestly, when it does come up, I, again, like introspection ends up being my favorite route because thing is, is like imposter syndrome is like you feeling inadequate for some reason. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, this is going to sound so weird, but like you, you are completely, that is one thing you can control mm -hmm. is how you feel. And I know that it's like, it's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is where I would like meditate or like journal or like try and figure out like, why am I feeling inadequate? Am I feeling like, am I comparing myself to others? Mm -hmm. Is it that I'm worried about how I'm, how I'm coming off across to other people? Mm -hmm. Like, what is it that's actually making me feel this stress, mm -hmm. you know? I'm getting imposter syndrome by talking to you like, oh shit, I, I, I need to be more productive, I need to wake up at 5 a.m. I, no, 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 no. I don't even do that right now. That's what I mean is like, I, I, I ebb and flow with my energy. The only, the only like superpower, like life hack that I have is that I, I just like lean in when I have a lot of energy, lean mm -hmm. into that. If I don't have as much energy, just do like, as little as as you need to do like just do only what you need to do no more mm -hmm. like that's that's how i approach it is like like right now work is like number one priority if i'm if my energy levels are super low do like just your mm -hmm. tasks at work and nothing else and then like it'll give you enough energy to like be able to recoup mm -hmm. and then you can start like when you're feeling better you can start to like do more but I don't, I'm like not a very, I'm a very firm believer in like not, um, yeah, not trying to like push, like resist against yourself mm -hmm. too much. It's okay. like a weird combination of yeah. like, sometimes I like, I'm just like listening to my body and then other times I'm just like, stop being a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of the two. I think one thing it taught me too is like the just do five minutes thing actually mm. really does work a lot. 
Yeah. Like, even if whether it's like gym, like you're, you're, you don't want to go to the gym, you don't want to study, you don't want to do whatever. It just, if you tell yourself, just do five minutes, it's okay to actually just do five minutes as well. Like, if most of the time, like when you sit down and you start it, you're like, okay, this actually isn't as bad as I was like mm. making it. We're scared of like <laughs> actually starting. Like, well, I, I don't want to steal too much time from you because I know you have the rest of your day entirely. Because thank you so much. I'll see you in the next phase. Bye. 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 Chat, say bye. Bye bye.